Hello and welcome back to the second part of this mold making overview video. In this part we will be making the model mold with an enhanced plaster. Very similar to aqua resin or jessmanite, so a couple of brand names that I know of. I start off by cutting up a bunch of uh, fiberglass. Nothing is more annoying than having, in the, having to cut up fiberglass in the middle of, uh, of working on this, something like this. And I start off by painting on a, a brush up splash coat. This is pretty thin layer. Um, I kind of mix it up to the consistency of a, of a thin cream. Here I've already put a couple of pieces of, uh, of fiberglass on, but I didn't get any, any, good, any good view of that, sadly, on the camera. I was in the way all the time. And right here you see me uh, wetting out fiber. First I wet out the surface that I've, that's already been dry. The splash coat is dry. I wet out the surface a little bit again. Then I wet out a piece of fiberglass and I use my brush to kind of put it on like you see right here. I lay it on, I make sure they always overlap uh, and then I tap it down with my brush and with my hand. So I only do one layer and that's kind of enough for this. Then uh, to build up a bit of a stronger edge where the mold is going to part, where the mold meets up with the silicone wall that you saw me build in the last episode, I take a bit of a thicker uh, when, once it kind of re reaches like uh, the aquares and reaches like a cr cream cheese kind consistency, kind of consistency, I guess. I I build up this little bit of an extra wall to give it a little bit of more strength. And you can see that I also have a pole in there at this point that's just been fiberglassed in. It's just a wooden wooden pole. Uh, you can use aluminum or anything else for that matter. And I use those to attach uh, bungee cords. Actually, I use those poles to attach the hooks of, of, of hooks of bungee cords and I use that to kind of strap my mold together. I find that that works a lot better than say a clamp or something like that. It kind of stays in place a little bit better. And I'm adding a little bit of thickness to the mold. This whole process is extremely straightforward and it's pretty much similar to what I would do if it was plastic. The only difference is I would use burlap and I would use more than one layer because burlap is a little bit weaker, plaster is a little bit weaker than this product. So I would use probably two to three layers instead of, or maybe even four instead of one. But it's pretty much the same. Uh, to split the front half of the mold, the back half is pretty straightforward, but the front half of the mold has to be split in two, as I explained in the last video. Uh, the back should come off pretty easy. The front, however, would, would get locked in if I didn't do this. So what that means is that there's undercuts on this front, and I solved the problem of these undercuts by building a clay wall and that clay wall uh, lets me build two pieces on the front. So this is kind of just, you know, creating a bit of a separating wall. And there's no real rhyme or reason to how tall I make this. Uh, the important thing is that it's tall enough so that it's thicker than, your, than what your surface is going to be so that there's some space to put bolts through it so that you can hold both sides together. And it's also important to make uh, the surface of this pretty smooth because there's going to be two separate pieces of, of, uh, of resin that are put together here. And so you can see the splash gun here, you can kind of see it running down a little bit, which kind of, kind of gives you an idea of the consistency that I use. And then we tamp in some fiberglass again. And it's pretty much rinse and repeat. And as you can see, these two pieces came off real nice and easy. And the back came off pretty easy also. <laughs> a little bit more work than I wanted to. So here's an interesting part. I'm going to cut the mold or the silicone apart and I use my mold knife, which uh, Tor Lars Larsen bought for me in Pietro Santa, which is very, very nice of him. And it's pretty cool, you know, you get a piece of uh, a, a tool that is from uh, one of the like one of the original marble carving towns in Italy, which is very, very exciting. And this mold or this knife has a trench in it, so it creates a positive and a negative. It has a little bend in it, I guess. So it creates a positive and a negative in the two separate sides of the silicone, which means that once they're put together, they register really, really nicely together. Now, normally, if you were to build one half at a time of the silicone, you could do the same thing. Uh, but you would say you would build like a clay wall, you would take your silicone up to that, and you would uh, build your registration into the, that silicone wall. Now this allows you to cut the mold in half and still have registration, which is great. Now it doesn't always cut all the way down to the surface. 
and you have to be very very careful that you cut in the middle because you know even if you uh, were slightly off to one side actually because of that little bend and it's a short knife so it doesn't always go down to the surface I prefer to have that little trench uh, not exactly at the surface but not all the way down to the mold as well so a lot of times I will put a little tape piece of tape to kind of mark how deep I want that knife to go and then I go back over with uh, with an exacto or some other thin thin bladed knife to cut the mold open and you can see the silicone pieces kind of flexes off and they come off real easy silicone is usually pretty forgiving uh, so having say like on the front which w the two hard pieces the two mother mold pieces would never have come off if I didn't uh, split them in two on the front that is uh, when the silicone it comes off and uh, you well I'm not gonna handle this mold much this one's going off to a foundry but it's just nice to to clean it up I'm using a rasp and a little knife here, and it's nice to clean up the edge of your mold so your uh, so your bronze caster doesn't cut himself and I cut uh, myself pretty badly on this mold this material is a lot harder than plaster it's almost kind of porcelain hard um, it's very very tough so watch out when you do this you know where maybe wear some gloves or something and I put the mold together using bolts and I would suggest using uh, wing nuts when you do this it's kind of tough to, to see but I am using wing nuts and this just helps and then I tear the sculpture part which is always uh, exciting <laughs> thank you guys for watching if you like what you saw hit the like button and subscribe for more that's the big red button that says subscribe very soon there'll be sculpting videos and uh, once I kind of have a little bit of a better setup I will do more in-depth mold making videos I know this was pretty quick but you know this is just kind of to show you my general process thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one